Good evening, everyone. Hope you had a really good day. Today we are doing an episode of Transformation Time. This is a show that I love to do because you get to hear about people's personal development journeys and their mindset shifts, which I find so important because if you aren't, um, if you can find someone that you can relate to, it really helps you out to go in a similar path. So that's why I like interviewing a lot of different people because it helps you find someone relatable and uh, just understand how they go through things. So I'm just going to add on Yaka for a minute. There we go. Hey, 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 how are you? I'm well. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Can you hear me fine? Perfectly. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. Like I was saying, it's always fun to hear people's personal development journeys and mindset shifts because we're all different and we all do, you know, we all do things in our own ways. And it's always nice to hear different people's perspectives. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for having me on. This is fun. <laughs> so let's start with just giving the guests a little bit, uh, just telling the guests a little bit about yourself. How, where, where are you in your entrepreneurship real estate journey? You caught me at a really interesting period. So uh, I started off, I'd say, pretty much like most other people doing what we're doing. I started off, well, I guess in a little bit of a different place, but doing the same similar kind of thing. I did. Uh, I started off with triplex conversions, um, but I started doing them in Toronto. So not a lot of people are, are uh, uh, think of Toronto as a good place for cash flow or for investment, but um, I made it work, and it was awesome. I had a lot of fun doing it. And I still own uh, my, my first two properties, which were triplex conversions. I still own them. They're fantastic. Um, and then I started to get uh, a little restless, a little impatient. And I said, I really want to level up. And so the next, the next thing that I wanted to take on was, a, was like a really big rebuild. So I took, on that, I took that on this past May. Um, we bought something uh, here in the Oakwood and Vaughn Road area. And, now we're doing a rebuild. And then it was, okay, I've got that kind of going. I got my, I got my mind wrapped around what, what that takes. All right, time to hit the big leagues. So uh, as of this past Monday, I'm now, I guess, officially a land developer. <laughs> oh, wow, congratulations. Fun and scary at the same time, right? Something completely new. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that was actually the goal. If I'm honest, that was the goal. Um, I'm part of uh, Corey McKinnon's coaching program, and it's it's unbelievable. Just it's like it's like adding rocket fuel um, to to have a coach and a team behind you. And uh, you know, I'd always I always had it in my mind that I have to do a lot before I get there, or I have to just make piles of money before I get there, or whatever it is. That was all in my head. I just made it all up. It was all limits that I made up for myself that come from just all sorts of places. Um, and then it was like, no, you know what? All, all that stuff is made up. Let's go for it. And so, yeah, my, I, set, I set a goal six months ago to, to get into a land development deal. And I, originally I thought that it was going to be like a, like a townhouse development or maybe even like a small severance, maybe like, you know, two semis kind of thing. And then this thing popped across my desk and, now I'm developing a four and a half acres of industrial land into a giant self storage facility in Fort Erie. So, oh wow, that's awesome! Yeah. And and I think one of the things that I just want to go back to that I think it's so important is like exactly what you're saying, like our mindsets, right? Something tells us that, for example, you have to start with something small, or you have to like take this specific path to get to a certain area, right? And for you, like, you halfway in between, you're just like, why? You know, like, why does this have to happen? And, uh, and just kind of, so, so how, did, how did you break that mind shift? Or what got you, um, like, actually thinking that, you know, let's just go big and, and, like, let's not worry about every single baby step along the way? Two things. Um, first was boredom. <laughs> 
Uh, and second, or maybe this is at the same time, or I can't even tell you what, what order this is in. But second was numbers. Um, so it was like the numbers were telling me that the returns weren't there for the stuff that I was doing before. And so I had two choices. I either adapt or I stop. And so stopping wasn't an option because I don't want to go back to doing my tech consulting stuff. It's lucrative, but I'm bored. Um, and then I was doing these, these triplex conversions and those are fun, but then I got bored of those too. And so it was like, I want to do something that scares the crap out of me. <laughs> that's amazing. Cause that's very hard for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was kind of like, like not an option to do anything else. Cause I wasn't going to go back to tech and I wasn't going to do any more of these triplexes because that my brain wouldn't let me because the numbers didn't make sense. So then it was like, okay, I've got to do this thing, but my brain is stopping me. My brain is telling me, don't do this. There's a way to get there. And the way to get there is baby steps. Um, and it was like one part of my brain knew that that was made up. But the other part of my brain, I think frequently referred to as like the reptilian part of the brain, like the, the survival part of the brain was like, what are you doing? That's, that's not a thing. You need to do all these other things. That's when I, I really saw the value of a coach. 100%. It is exactly what you said. The coach, the mentorship, that helps you. Because it's very true, especially when you're ch changing something so fundamental in you that you think, like, this is the way it is, and breaking yeah. that. Like, you need outside intervention, right? You need, you need something to be, like, knock you in the face and be like, what are you thinking, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, was, it was so interesting working with the coach because, like, I come into the program and it's like, I say that this is my goal. And then it's like the coach's role to both um, nurture this, but also to, to set me up to be a more well-rounded investor. And so I wasn't an easy student. <laughs> 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 so but i can't i can't thank the coaches enough just because they worked on the stuff that i couldn't it's like mm -hmm. they see the things that i don't um and when i'm when i'm down and i'm doubting myself and all that um it's easy to it's easy to look for a coach and say i want a coach that's that will show me how to do stuff but that's easy. You can find that stuff online. You can find that stuff through books. You can find that, that stuff anywhere. The real magic is what's between your ears. Like, mm -hmm. like the mindset and the heart, the will, the why, all that stuff. And man, I remember early on in my journey, I would hear people say this and I'd be like, shut up. <laughs> it's so true, right? Like none of us go in starting thinking like, I'm going to work on my mindset because that's important to getting better into my whatever journey I'm in, like entrepreneurship or real estate. You come in like, I need knowledge. I need to figure out how to buy a property. It's all that matters to me. And then yeah. as you start going exactly right, then you're like, oh, maybe this personal development and mindset stuff should like make sense. You know, like you start seeing your changes in you. And then you're like, maybe what they're talking about is true. And it's not mumbo jumbo because you're just like, shut, yeah, exactly what you say. You're like, shut up. Like, can we get to reality? Like, I'm not in dream world, you know? <laughs> Give me the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Something else that happened was, like, I went in and I started off really hot. Like, my first deal was a home run. My second deal was a home run. My third deal was a home run. And then I couldn't think of any more home runs to hit. And then I just sort of lost my fuel and I lost, I lost my drive and everything. And I'd been so focused on the numbers and focused on the business that I didn't build myself at the same time. So when it came time to, to make this jump, all of the stuff in my head that I I'd neglected because I could, all of that came up and for the last up until a month ago the prior two months i was just done i was i was out 
I more or less ghosted everybody. And when I look back on it, it was 100% that I just got crushed under the weight of my own expectations, my own goals. I just stared at them every day, and they won. Um, I set a goal that scared the crap out of me, and eventually it beat the crap out of me. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I was out. And I was out for months. And, uh, and then the only thing that got me back out of that was just – starting to read and getting back in touch with my coaches and my five minutes journal, like the gratitude and, and all that stuff in the morning, it was just like the self care and the mindset had all been completely neglected just for the sake of executing on this stuff that I already knew how to do. And when it came time to grow beyond myself, I got stuck on exactly all that stuff that I was saying, ah, shut up to. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's awesome though, that you were able to see that and do that because some people, and I think this is because you sound like an action taker. So you're probably in the back of your, like in front, you're like, I give up. I give up. Like, I don't know what's going on. I can't seem to like move on forward. But the back of your mind's like, no, I need something to happen. Like, this is not me. I hate being stagnant. And then you're like, let's look into this mumbo jumbo business because like, I'm starting to lose, like, I'm starting to lose the belief of things happening. And it's just like, yeah. what is going on? And you just start really looking into other avenues, you know, like, right. I'm assuming is that what happened? hundred percent, hundred percent. Being, re being uh, surrounded by people that are doing this stuff is awesome too. But if I'm honest, I'm doing stuff that, that not a lot of the people in my circle are doing. So um, it's not actually even necessary that, you, that you're doing the same things as everyone else. It's just necessary you're on the same journey. Um, mm -hmm. Everything else can get filled in, but being surrounded by people, that really helped me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like you said, or like you tell me what you think, but I think it's not like you said. It, you don't have to be doing the exact same things because a lot of us, a lot of us aren't. But we have a lot of, for example, we're on that entrepreneurship journey. We're on that real estate journey. And in that, you know, we're moving quickly. And we can hit, like, our ups and downs super quickly, not like the general public. Like, we're we're trying to build a business out of it. So it makes us go, go, go. And then you just have your network to at least understand what's going on. Because it's just like that. Like, you need your network to be like hey, you know what, it's okay, like, maybe try this out or that or whatever kind of motivation is needed at the time. Is, yeah. is that how you feel about it? Absolutely. And uh, mm -hmm. you never know. Like, I never knew the power of having a network around me. To be honest, I'd always kind of thought myself as, um, as different, just an outsider. And when I, um, when I joined, like, I was in part of one community and now I'm part of several communities. And just reaching out and just seeing what happens when I was like, hey, guys, I'm looking for an engineer in this particular area. All of a sudden, it's like I got tons of people saying, oh, I know this person. Hey, I worked with that person. It's like the power of the community um, is unbelievable. And not everybody is particularly vocal about what they're doing. And so when I reached out and people were like, yeah, I've actually done that. I was like, I had no idea. You didn't, you didn't tell me. Wait, what? You, you built a, a whole building? Oh, you've gone through this whole thing? You have an architect you work? It's like the power of, of many. It's like they say, um, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, you go together. And the bigger the thing that we're doing, and in this case, I'm doing a pretty big thing, the, the more that community comes to play. Mm -hmm. 100%, yeah. And like that, I think the bigger you go, like you said, like you start realizing the importance of having that group of people to help you out and having the right kind of people, right? The like-minded people that will actually want to help you out too. Cause there are, I'm sure other communities or other types of people where it's like, they're kind of like trying to crush you down to the ground to get up kind of thing. Whereas like having that healthy community that is there to support and help you also really helps empower you. That's right. And uh, that is something unique about the real estate community. Uh, it's so great that you pointed it out. There's no other community that I know where people are, are legitimately saying, yeah, I want to help you out. Even if the two of you are doing the same thing, maybe you're in different cities or whatever it is. And then it's like, it's so much more powerful. 
So I'm, I'm in touch right now with a number of developers that they're doing similar things to what I'm doing, but in different places. We're running through the same problems. We have to deal with the same issues. We have to answer the same questions, but we're just doing it in different places. And so leveraging their experience, leveraging their network, um, leveraging all of their lessons is, is a way to just totally shortcut um, this entire process of just learning from scratch. And the real estate community is unbelievable for that. So, I, so I'm constantly just reaching out to people that know more than I do on the things that I'm not an expert on. And it's just, it's such a much more efficient way to do things. And actually on that topic, one of the big mind shifts for me was the book, Who Not How. Um, Cause I was always under the impression that I have to be the expert at everything. That's the only way to get something done. Man, was that holding me back? <laughs> I thought I had to know everything. It was, just, oh man, I looked back, like, what the hell was I doing? Um, <laughs> so now, now what's my superpower? How did I create this project, like this, uh, this development project? How did I create it? People are like, wait, you sound like you've done this like a thousand times. You sound like you've been in self-storage for like years. I'm like, no, I'm just talking to the people that have. And I just let them tell me what they've learned. And I'm letting them tell me how to do this thing so that I don't have to be the one to figure it out. I'm hiring amazing engineers to do the, all this stuff for me so I don't have to be the one that's an expert. Take that mindset. Take that and you can apply it to whatever the heck you want. And it doesn't have to be single family home to duplex, duplex to triplex. You don't have to go through all that. Learn. Uh, if somebody goes through the process of learning how to leverage other people's expertise, they can apply it to whatever the heck they want. 100%. And even just something that I feel like you're also alluding to is like having the open mind to listen to those people, right? Like you said, like not being like, I need to know everything and actually allowing the people to like let you, like let them share their knowledge with you and learn from them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and even right now, I'm, I'm still a very much a novice at it. You know, I, I watch... Uh, every morning, I, I watch 15 minutes of mindset podcasts, and I know this is like so typical. And I, I obviously thought this guy was really corny for a long time, but I'm watching a lot of Tony Robbins these days, and that guy's something else. And he, I wonder, I wonder to myself, how the hell did that guy start like 160 businesses? He has 160 businesses. Wow, I how didn't do, know that. Yeah, how do you do that? That's craziness, right? And the businesses aren't related. They're not all the same thing or like, you know, vertically integrated. No, man, they're, they're all over the place. And the way that he does that is the same as what I'm learning to do now. I'm just learning baby steps, if you, if you will, of how to build a team that I just, that I trust. How do I build a team that I don't have to be the expert. I just need to be the conductor. Um, and I'll, I'm going to take this um, and the the increased self belief uh, in being able to execute this. And so the next project I'll be doing, oh, watch out! <laughs> it's way bigger than this one. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> that's amazing, and that's great. And I remember when we sp first spoke. I think it's probably been like six months, maybe, since we like when we first spoke. Yeah. And uh, I want to say, actually, it's really interesting. You actually. Like you look different, like your or behavior is different. So it's very interesting to see that. Uh, I feel like you you are exactly what you're saying, right? That you can tell that the personal development and mindset has kind of just like sunk in. I feel like I'm talking to a different person, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I was like, I look different. Is that six months of sleep deprivation for my uh, little one and a half year old yeah, but it's amazing to see that going, and and I think it's that it's and it's really funny I, what you're saying. You know, like even with me, like people will say, for example, especially like our mentors would say, just just do it, for example. And you're like, it's not just doing it. You know, like I would just be like, it's not that simple. Like they tell you things, and you feel like they're just saying it, and it's just like simple words, and and it's that easy to get it done. And once you get into this personal development journey, you're like, oh, it is really that simple. 
Oh, let's be accurate though. It's very simple. It's not easy. Exactly. It's simple. Like the actions, like taking the actions are simple, 100%. But obviously it's a lot of work. It's a lot of roller coasters. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I, I actually really want to start a series and I, I don't know how to do it. But here's, here's a thing that I'm becoming really present to. People on Instagram, they, it's, Instagram is like a highlight reel. And even people like James Fernandez, uh, who you think that it's like a low light reel with like all the crazy like bathrooms and murders and crazy stuff that he, he sees in his buildings, it's still a highlight reel. The real deal, what, is, what it's really like to be a real estate investor is a roller coaster every freaking day. And people just see the nice, the nice things. Mm -hmm. So the other day, you know, I posted something that was like, here's my day. And here's all the crazy things that, that I that I do. But even that doesn't cover like the, the roller coaster of that day. Oh, I got this piece of news that changes the project budget by 400,000. I'm actually serious. That was actually what happened. And then <laughs> I then my my topography survey guy comes back and says, hey, I can only do this in the snow. Like that one sentence is two months is literally two months of, of budget. And then somebody else comes back and says, hey, you don't need to do the, su uh, the sewer servicing requirements. You can do something else. Bam, six months of the project just got cut off. It's like, it's literally like that all the time. And the bigger the project, the bigger the swings, the bigger the roller coaster. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing, is, so, so I, want, I want people to know that. I want people to experience that. Um, and I also want people to see, you can come out the other side. That's one thing. But the other one is, man, I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed when I started <laughs> Corey McKinnon's program. Um, he made me read a few books. And one of them is called The Slight Edge. Have you read The Slight Edge? I love The Slight Edge, actually. I hated it. <laughs> I was going to think, I was like, you're going to say you hated it, and I loved it. <laughs> I freaking hated it. And it's like, be patient. I'm like, no. <laughs> and it's like, you're going to do all sorts of things for a long time and you're not going to see results. I'm like, that's stupid. Why would someone do that? <laughs> and I never thought of myself as the kind of person that can go through that period of no results and then stick to it enough to get results. And that's now. Because it was six that's months true. ago. Yeah, it was six months ago that I set the goal of starting a, a, a real estate development. It was six months, and it was six months of doing stuff, uh, interspersed with periods of not doing stuff because I was discouraged. But I kept coming back. Mm -hmm. Coaches, shame, boredom, whatever brought me back, brought me back. And so here we are. And so now it's, you know, we're back to the highlight reel. Hey, look at this crazy project I'm doing. We're going to make oodles of money. Um, and again, no one's going to talk about you know, like the 72 hours that I spent on the phone to even get this project to an offer stage. And so when they're doing it, like when you're doing anything or when anyone who's watching is doing something, they're probably going to go through the same thing. They're going to say, oh, I'm doing all this stuff. Where's the results? Maybe I should stop. Maybe this isn't working. Maybe I'm not good enough, whatever. Um, and the only way to know is to do it. Just do it. Like what you said. <laughs> That's like the promo of this, this episode, right? Just do it yeah. <laughs> and stick with it. Because like you said, it's, uh, you go through your highs and lows, and sometimes the lows take a while because you need that, right? You need to go to that low to yep. just kind of give you that like slap in the face to say and be like, you know, this isn't where you want to be. Just get moving now. Like you hit the bottom, time to go, you know, like time to get onto the mission that you actually set for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so I think that's great. And you pointed on like a lot of great things that is true. Like, for example, um, like that, like that was actually even one of the reasons of talking about, for example, in my show, like the shows like Re Behind the Scenes and Transformation Time is to mm -hmm. show that, you know, yeah, especially these last few years, right? Everything is just like boom, 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 amazing, amazing numbers. And it's like, yeah, I made good money, 100%. Like, I made good money. But when people say like, oh, but it's so easy for you, like you just do this, I'm just like, you don't understand the stresses 
that I go through to like make sure this thing is successful. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like uh the other day my neighbor on on my uh rebuild, my neighbor calls me he's like, "Hey, I think there's some water coming from your house." And I come go over there and unbeknownst to me, I have a new indoor water feature. <laughs> always great, always great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had, a, I had a nice fountain right through the living room. Oh my it, god, how did that happen? It, it, a pipe burst. The house was oh. unheated. This is a house that's going to be essentially a teardown, unheated, just water, just ankle deep. Yeah, no, okay. one's gonna, no one's going to remember that on the highlight reel, like six months from now when I sell this thing. No one's going to know what, it, what what we went through there. Mhm yeah 100% it is it is funny when those kind of things happen or same thing for example our Toronto flip yeah um we obviously gutted everything and because the and we were waiting to get the roof done to start the interior work and we knew the roof was going to leak so we had like waterfalls in our house it was really funny and it was just like everywhere water coming cuz the snow was melting at that time right so the snow is melting and just like waterfalls and waterfalls and we're here like trying to like take everything out or I was not me but you know the team right taking all the yeah. water out and just like making sure to keep everything clean and drying it up and and it was really funny because for me I can't say that I was like if this was someone else they probably would have been like panicking and going crazy and to me I was just like is this something that I need to worry about you know like like this, is this really a big deal or is it just right. because we need to get the roof done Right yeah. and and I think also with that you gain experience right like you said I'm sure if you do and I think this is the point that you're making of boredom is like if you do another triplex again you've kind of done all those like big problems you've gone through them like it's not really like anything mysterious anymore and then yeah. so you kind of want to start going bigger or going into bigger projects because I think that's naturally the entrepreneur mentality, right? We yeah. we love change. We love like just like, ooh, let's see what happens if we do this. You know, let's see if we happen to do that and what happens. You know, I think uh, that's just also natural in us where it's just like we want to go in and just be like, ooh, I want to do this. Let's see what happens. You know, like it's it's exciting and new and different and and like that. It doesn't stay monotonous. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, something else that, that just came up when when you were talking about this is the concept of uh, literally two days ago I, I got this Tony Robbins again. Um, I have it right on my wall. It's a sticky note right there. Problem finding mode versus problem solving mode, and uh, like as humans were wired, like our brain is wired to find problems because that helps us survive. It helps us to survive to be constantly on the lookout for problems. And it's not natural to to shift your brain or my brain into uh, into problem solving mode. Naturally, I go into problem finding mode. And so, the more often I can catch myself doing that, the better. Um, and at some point, <laughs> after going through enough stuff, um, the the scale of problems stops registering like the scale of of like this thing uh you know this water feature in my house it just didn't register and i came home and i i said this to vicky and she started losing her mind this is my wife she goes oh my god what's gonna happen i'm like babe it's a tear down it's fine and uh and i have uh, lots of drainage in the basement or it'll freeze and uh you know it's fine and mm -hmm. and just everything is fine because everything is just a problem to be solved. And it brings me back to this other uh, concept from, I can't remember who got it, but it was like, the people that solve the biggest problems, they're the ones that collect the biggest paychecks. So at this point, this may be a little bit masochistic, but at this point, I'm like, big problems, bring it. Bring it. 100%, 100%. And exactly what you're saying, I think it's very true, actually. I have also gone through that phase. It's very interesting you say that. I've also gone through the phase where I would say back then, I would stress. A problem would come. And like, yeah, you're trying to find the solution, but I would stress about it. Like, like probably like make myself sick, actually. I would actually make myself sick of stress because I would just stress so much about the problem. Whereas like now you're right, like you kind of go through a shift where 
you're just like, okay, what's the solution? Like, let's just figure it out. You know, it's like, you know, who can I, like you said, who can I talk to to get this solved? What can we do to get it? And you don't, you don't really, I don't know, like, again, mental, probably the, the um, personal development that you do, it also kind of prepares you and, and also the experience, right? Because you just start realizing with as you move on, as you grow, right? You feel like, okay, like, I don't know, I thought you think you start thinking about more of the solutions and you kind of like minimize the, the problem, like the problem doesn't become big or something. I don't know. What do you think? Like, how does it for you? Um, how it is for me is that when I started out in this stuff, um, I didn't have the confidence or I'd even say the absolute confidence that whatever came up, I can deal with it. Um, people think that when they when they have a lot of knowledge, that's when they'll have confidence. Confidence doesn't come from knowledge. Um, knowledge will give you a little bit of confidence, but nothing gives you confidence like having gone through something 10 times already. Um, so at this point, it's exactly like what you said. Ex yeah, it's exactly like that. It's like when something comes up, there's no stress anymore because I know I can deal with it because I've dealt with so much already. Um, and maybe when I get to big enough scales, I will not have dealt with something. I'll, I'll deal with something for a first time. But even dealing with that is going to sit on top of the confidence that I have of having dealt with all that other stuff. So, and I think what you're alluding to is actually also just saying that, like that, like, I think we're hardwired to think that there are situations where you cannot solve a problem, where now we've learned that that is actually not true by any sense. There will always be a solution to a problem. And I think that is probably at least the, like, the consolidating feeling that you get that you're, that there's no end to something, right? It's, it's always, there's always going to be a solution to any problem. And probably, yep. like you said, even though it's like a huge, huge problem, you're just talking to other people to like, what can we do? How can we pivot? Because nothing is ever absolute in, in the way that you don't want it to be. If, if anything, things are absolute in the way you want it to be, I feel like, right? As long as you're putting the energy, getting there, doing the work, it gets done because that's how you wanted it to be. Yeah. Um, back to, again, Tony Robbins. I swear he's not paying me for endorsements here. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he was talking about uh, he has this one expression says uh, the world will give you what you ask of it and uh, maybe it's because I'm a single child or like an only child or whatever but man I ask for stuff and I didn't used to ask for stuff but man do I ask for stuff like I, so I had an architect or have an architect he's fantastic for, for my rebuild and we got this news from the zoning examiner. Hey, we're going to be counting your back wall, like this just absolute crummy addition that somebody built made out of like chopsticks and, and spit. Like that's their rear addition. They're like, we're going to count that back wall. So if you take that down, it's more than 50%. And, and um, this is going to be considered a new build. So we get this news and he's like, well, we're going to have to redesign this and this. I'm like, no, we're not redesigning shit. Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to keep this rear addition inside the house. We're going to build the house around it. And then once we close the permits, we're ripping it out. And we're going to design the whole thing in such a way that that rear addition is actually sort of part of the design. And so when we rip it out, it's just like open shelves now, like throughout the living room kind of thing. Um, and he was like, that's crazy. I'm like, I know it's crazy. You know what's crazier? Redesigning this thing. Can this be done? <laughs> Can this be done? And he's like, I don't know. Let, let me try. And so he messed around with it. And then we came up with something. But, you know, it's so easy to just say, well, he's the architect. He knows. We got to try stuff. We got to try stuff. We got to ask. Um, and uh, same with this with this project uh, in Fort Erie. They were like, "Hey, uh, you're not going to be able to to get a sewer there." I said, "Okay, can we do a septic system? Can we do porta potties? What do we got to do?" And they're like, "Well, if you want to do porta potties, you got to go through the region." I'm like, "Cool. Tell tell me the person talk to the region. Let's go talk to the region." It's like it, the whole thing is like this uh, choose your own adventure story. 
Uh, but you got to keep asking. You got to keep digging. Don't take no. That's not a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess that's... Really, isn't it actually kind of fun? Because yeah. you start getting into your creativeness and you start really working on being creative because, like you said, not everyone has done what we have done or, or for example, dealt with those kind of issues. And then it just kind of starts bringing out your creative. It's like you said, you know, if if you want something to get done in a specific way, it's getting done. And now it's just figuring out what are those solutions and kind of, and actually I've always noticed too, when you say no to someone and you say like, that's not, that's not an option. They will come back with options because you're like, give me something else. And, yeah. or you yourself are even doing it yourself. Like this isn't an option now, now what it is, right? Cause now that you know, you've taken that off the table. Now you can bring other things to the table, yeah. right? That you never thought of because maybe if you're compliant and you're like, yeah, okay, let's do that. Cause that's the only option we have. Like, I think removing that, right? Never saying that that's the only option we have. It's like investigating more yeah. and just figuring it out. Yeah. And if I don't know an answer, man, I'm not the first one to do any of this stuff. I'm, I'm not special. I'm not different. Someone's done this stuff. Someone knows. Just got to find them. Just got to find the who. Mm-hmm. And like that, exactly. Like even if a problem comes up, talking to your community, because maybe that person may not know, but they may know someone that may know, and they start even connecting you with like, oh, maybe talk to this person. They've actually dealt with something similar, or they've had like certain problems, and then and it's just like, yeah, you just realize how everything really interconnects, you know, and like that, like how personal development is so important. Changing your mindset is so important. And, and like your community is so important. Yeah, absolutely. So at, at the end of the day, I wish I knew, I wish I knew before what I know now, but I also am happy to have earned what I know now. Cause some mm-hmm. of it, it's just not something you can learn. It's like riding a bike. You just you just can't learn that stuff from reading a book. You gotta you gotta get on the bike and you gotta fall. And then eventually you just you can ride a bike. Same with this stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know where all this is gonna take me. Am I gonna be building subdivisions? Maybe. I'll tell you right now. I don't see any sense in residential at the moment. But hey, what do I know? Um, Am I going to go building skyscrapers? Who knows? Maybe. Am I going to be building resorts in Costa Rica? Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. Just leaving it for the future and keeping it fun because once it comes, yep. you know, it will, like, it'll just come to you, right? Like you said, you'll get bored. Boredom will come again. We all know that as entrepreneurs, we get bored, right? And then we're just like looking for what is the next thing. We always want to kind of, I think it's like the mental stimulation, right? We always want to be mentally stimulated and yeah. just be like, okay, what is the next, you know, what's the next thing that I need, I want to learn or, or try to figure out or be creative in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and again, like right now we're talking, like you and I are talking as the people that have gone through everything that we've gone through. But I wouldn't even got, have gotten started on this journey if it wasn't for like years and years and years ago, when I was 16, I started reading this book called Conversations with God. And that's opened up my mindset to some stuff. Um, but the fear had always paralyzed me still. Um, and it was only when I did um, a self-development program called Landmark, Landmark Forum. Um, that's the one that I would say officially set me on the path. And again, the forum, I'm not advertising for whatever, but it just made a huge difference in my life. And the difference that it made for me was that it gave me the courage to fail. Before, I was always under, I was always under this fear that if I failed, people wouldn't love me. Mm-hmm. And what I came out of that with was um, I'm loved. And it didn't matter if I fail or not. And that just mm-hmm. opened things up to, to take things on. And out of that, I got... Like, I got my wife out of that. Um, out of that, I, I got the courage to even try real estate investing. Um, out of that, I got the courage to, you know, at, least at this point, I'd say I'm at least half out of my 15-year career of, like, technology consulting. It's a very lucrative career. But I never would have had the courage to even look at doing something different if it hadn't been for that. So, again, it goes back to mindset. It doesn't go back to, like, this mechanics like i know how to real estate invest sure 
but did I was I going to do it? No. <laughs> it was going to fail. Yeah. That's a great point that you make about failure because it is some people have um very like it's like we're taught that a lot of people are taught that failure is a bad thing and it's almost that you it's you don't think of I guess when you're young like actually the amount of failures that you go through or like that maybe it's just like maybe that someone gets mad cuz you fail i don't know what it is but like as you're young like you're failing and you fail a lot to be honest i feel like cuz i mean you're learning right you're a little kid you know even starting from baby you're learning how to crawl you're learning how like, you're falling all the time right and you're in school you're making mistakes you know in sports or whatever you're having to learn something you're never going to be perfect on the first try like you're always learning and um uh and I like but let's say for me though I felt like failure became harder as I got older I was actually when I was younger I was actually okay with failure mm. um I don't know why I guess because of the sports and the stuff that I did like the coaches I had it was normal to fail because it's like you just have to keep on trying or maybe the word failure wasn't used and it was like okay well do it again you know do it again like until you get better you got to keep on going repetitions important you know mm-hmm. but for you, how for you uh like did you feel like did things change also like let's say before landmark did you feel like as you were getting older failure got harder or or um like how was that as you you know or is it even something you even yeah cuz i think you must have thought of it right in the, when you were younger because like you said like you're worried to fail mm-hmm. it was bad on you Yeah, it was I always had it that if I fail people won't love me. My mom and my grandma who raised me, they they had this impression that I was like just the most talented, most just everything. And so there was no way I was going to live up to that. Even if I could, I probably wouldn't want to. Um and I certainly didn't have the will to. So um so there was really no way for me to to go about life trying stuff and failing because then that would just destroy their and my impression of myself. So mm. that was that was really what underpinned this this paralysis of failure. Um that's not to say I didn't do stuff anyways. Um mm-hmm. but I didn't do stuff to anywhere near the capacity that I that I could. Uh I didn't take on as much as as I could because if I failed I wouldn't be loved. Or that's how that's the impression that I was under. Um mm-hmm. so I I'd say I I wouldn't be able to honestly answer you whether it was because I got older that failure became easier or was it because of the the active deliberate journey that I've undertaken that has made failure not even really a thing it's just not a thing anymore it just it, it doesn't compute it's not that it doesn't exist it's just, it's just that that's not how I see it like a Or thing you that you're using like a different term like that when i was like probably what you were saying what you're happening now is what it was for me when i was young right it's like we never really called it failure right because yeah. we were just talking about okay this happened like now you just have to try again or change this technique or improve this or you know they yeah, tell you yeah. how to do it which is exactly what we do now with our mentors right yeah. if if something's going wrong your mentor's like okay well let's 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 see what happened how can we fix it right now how can we make it better and you don't yeah. and then so maybe the word failure is it really there to say anymore because you don't you don't really focus on that right you're focusing on okay this happened now how do we improve it how do we fix it yeah it's like the same things more or less happen to everybody um but it's a question of what's your lens how do you see it somebody sees i don't know chips on the ground they're like food somebody else will see chips on the ground they're like mess right it's mm. it's just it's all about your lens or my lens i don't i don't want to ever speak like in third person it's about my lens and so a thing happens and the lens is opportunity or the lens is okay we got to reformulate our strategy here or the lens is just learn it, it's failure is not really a thing anymore Mhm. Exactly. It's where you're putting the emphasis on. That's a, that's amazing you say that. And and that is exactly actually what mindset shifts are. Exactly what you're talking about that mind shift itself. That's the paradigm. Something happens 
and it changes your perspective. And like that, maybe in the past, for example, you would see food on the ground as messy, and then now you think of it as like it's food on the ground. You know, it's something to eat or something. I don't know. Like yeah. you, it's changing the the perspective, and with changing the perspective is actually how you um, get further. And I'm curious, actually, what you think about this. So with my type of mindset shifts. I've noticed that, for example, I've been breaking rules that I had that were really strange to me. And like, I can give you examples of, for example, I always thought that I needed eight hours of sleep or not. Let's not do that one, actually. Sorry. I thought like, for example, that I needed to like, I needed to quit my job to be able to start a business, um, to be able to focus on it. Right. And that was like some kind of rule stuck in my mind that just never like I, I just thought like. I'm going to wait until I can actually quit my job and start a business. And then all of a sudden, like that passion came, the why came, the I don't know what it was, the passion came to do this. Like I just really loved this. Mm -hmm. And I was working like crazy hours and finding the energy from nowhere, which was so strange to me. And then I realized like that, it's the paradigm shift. It's that um, mindset shift where I – broke a rule do you feel like you saw it in that way or like have you seen for example you had rules in you where all of a sudden something happens and you just you've kind of like broken that rule and it's not true anymore to you yeah that was that was more or less how I even started to take on these bigger projects because the rule that I had in my head was ah, yeah you gotta you gotta do this thing then you gotta take the baby step up to that then you gotta take the baby step up to that I made it up mm -hmm. I made the whole thing up um, and yeah, that was, that's an example of, of a rule, but something I, I guess I'm not proud of is like, I'll make, I'll make rules and promises to myself and I won't keep them. So it's not weird for me to break my own rules. It's, uh, it's, it would be weirder for me to, to stick to my own rules. There's a few that I don't break. Um, and that's cause I have no desire to like, I don't drink period at all, anything. And I never have. Same with drugs. Uh, same with coffee. Like, no mind-altering substances of any kind, period. I have no desire to break that rule. It doesn't take will for me to break it, to not break it. But other things, like I'm going to do the dishes every other day, I, I can promise that to myself as much as I want. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. <laughs> It'll happen a little bit. So, uh, I just wanted to address that, because, man, like, you know, I'm not some paradigm of of like immutable will and you know unlimited potential like i'm just i'm human i'm doing my thing um growing learning failing falling reformulating keep going stop keep going like you know that's <laughs> as long as i'm growing a little bit every day as long as i'm a little bit uh as i'm as long as i'm taking little steps every day that you know what that's another big thing that's shifted for me is that before I had to see giant leaps. That was the only way that I measured progress was giant leaps. I need to be able to look at something as a, look at that crazy thing. Um, and Corey McKinnon always says that people, they people, people overestimate what they can do in a year and they underestimate what they can do in five years. And I just never had that five year mentality before. And that was a huge shift for me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing you said. And you kind of said it also uh, just like a few minutes ago that like that, like you want things to happen quickly. And if they don't, you probably won't stick with it. Because that's funny you say that. I also had the same mentality. Like I was when I got into this, I was actually very scared, to be honest, because I was scared that I would quit in between because I wasn't, I wasn't seeing the results fast enough. Yeah. And I think you were basically alluding to the same thing where, you know, if you're not seeing, for example, like I'm making a million dollars in a year because that's exactly what I set my mind to, that you'd be like finishing it off. And I had, I had very similar when I, I mean, when I started, my fears were that I would probably quit just because I didn't want to. But again, I think it was probably the community, right. That helped out and, and the mentorship to be like, no, just keep on going, keep on going. You're going to see the fruits of your labor and, and just push forward. Yeah. And I think that for us, and I speak us as in you and I, 
specifically? Because um, I, I feel like we have a lot of similarities in our in our internal makeup. The the secret sauce is harnessing the impatience and tempering it with our mindset. It's uh, it's it's taming the storm, not dousing it. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's harnessing the the power of the storm as opposed to putting it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's yeah, the power. Of it. It's like to me, I feel like I see it. It's like trying to tame that wild animal. It's okay, <laughs> tame it. It's just patience, and <laughs> it will come. Yeah, I I would almost say if we're going to use a wild animal analogy, it's like don't tame the animal, put a harness on it so that all of that energy is pulling something. Oh, interesting. Like, I like that analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, focusing it. Yeah, like focusing that energy in the right things instead of focusing on the impatient and just be like, it's not happening, it's not happening, it's not happening, ignoring it. Put that energy to let's keep on moving forward. Let's be That's consistent. Right. Let's keep on making those baby steps to make it happen. Love that yeah. analogy. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, I, I'm talking to, to contractors like several times a day now of various kinds, engineers, survey people, electrical, like all these people. And I tell them right off the bat, I say, hey, man, I'm going to tell you what it's going to be like to, to work with me. You're going to get instant answers. And the only thing I care about is speed. Um, I don't care that much about price. I care about speed. Um and so that's the way in which I, I harness my impatience um, and, I, and I, I put it to work in driving these projects forward. Um, and even already, it's like, you know, it's been a month and we're pretty much done our due diligence on this Fort Erie project because I'm so impatient. I don't, I don't want to wait three months to figure out if this thing works or not. It's got to be as fast as possible. How do, we, how do we make this simultaneous? How do we parallel uh, some of these processes. Who can I put to work at the same time? Um, mm-hmm. Like all that stuff. It's just it's harnessing that impatience and putting it to work. Hundred percent. Totally agree. And last and final question. So, and I'm sure this is going to be a big, a big like. I'm sure you have big aspirations. So, what do you see yourself doing in the next five to ten years? What are your goals? What are your dreams? And it can My be goal, personally or in, re- or in business, whichever you like. So the more I know, it's like, how do I put this? My goals are limited by my mindset. My goals are limited by what I think is at least even vaguely achievable. But I'll tell you, I have it on my wall right there. 2022 goals. First one, get development projects started. Well, it's freaking February 3rd, and I've got one started. (laughs) So my mindset three weeks ago was that if I get a development project started right now, or like this year, that'll be a huge win. And now that I've got one started, I'm like, I can do four of these. So before, I used to be like, yeah, I'm going to, this is going to be my five-year goal. But after I've seen the trajectory at which I, at which I grow, I'm afraid to put goals. Because my goals feel like more like limits at this point. So I do have my short-term goals. And my short-term goals are get a development project started, get my uh, rebuild sold, um, grow my Instagram um, and social media following, and gain 15 pounds of muscle. Um, But at this point, I have no idea if in six months you and I are going to talk and I'll be like, yeah, you know, my goal is now some other crazy thing. Um, high level, my goal is to not work um, in tech. My goal is to do this full time. And this actually, this Fort Erie project is going to allow me to do that. Um, yeah. Like, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, at this point, it's going to be a very interesting journey to figure out what the heck it is that's going to actually seem so daunting that I can't mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. And I find that really funny. Actually, I also don't like setting big, big goals because exactly what you said, because 
because of the personal development and mindset shifts that I've just seen myself go through, exactly what you're saying, like now even the way I word things, I don't want to limit it. And I try to be more than, for example, because I'm just like, I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. And, and I just feel like you put that barrier and then, and you limit yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as soon, like, as soon as I hit that, that, like the start of that project, I knew I was in trouble. Because I, I feel that I got bit by this bug. And this bug is like, man, if this is, if this is what you can do in a month, there's, there's another 11 of these this year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, where is this one going? Man, who knows? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my That's non-answer. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. It was so much fun to chat with you and get to know you a lot more. I noticed that we seem to have a lot more similarities than I thought we did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, this is awesome. It was a pleasure. It was an honor. Um, one of the things that makes me most, like, most fulfilled in life is mentorship and teaching. Um, I have a bunch of mentors, like, mentor, like mentees now that are doing some awesome stuff. They're, they're actually all doing triplexes, if you can believe it, in Toronto. Um, so... <laughs> Um, so, you know, if somebody got some value out of this, I, I, I'm just going to be happy with that. That's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next episode. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.